I did not kidnap my daughter. So they ran away. You said your life would be better if she was dead. If she was gone forever, yeah. Definitely. She claims he's brainwashing their girls against her. She's a drunk. She is nuts. I don't quite consider her a woman anymore. You do admit that you emotionally and verbally abuse her. I do. I do. I, well, you've done it that. since you've been out here. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. I try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. Robin, a divorced mother of 14-year-old Danny and 12-year-old Zoe, who claims the two young girls were kidnapped this summer, lured from their home by their own father. Now, Robin says her ex brainwashed the two girls, but he says he didn't have to convince the girls to leave with him. He says they hate their mother and wanted to run away. Take a look. It's the worst custody battle I've ever heard of. An over-possessive, uh, slightly disabled mother tries to turn her children against the father. In the end, now 14 and 12 years old, the kids have uh, decided that there's something wrong with mom and they don't want anything to do with her anymore. They actively run away and hide from her <laughs> and they're with me. Well, Robin is livid because she claims neither lawyers nor courts, not even the police, will do anything to help her rights as the primary custodial mother. Even though I have full legal custody of our girls, my ex-husband Daniel and I have fought over their custody for years. We've been in our court so many times, I couldn't even begin to count. I took a guess, I'd say 30. Our custody battle is completely out of control. A few months ago, when my girls were staying with their dad, my daughter Zoe called me and said she didn't want to exist. I could hear Daniel yelling at her, using profanity. When I arrived at Daniel's house, he refused to let me take the kids home. I was furious. Robin is an unfit mother. Robin neglects the children. When they're their moms, I've had safety concerns, cuts on their legs from swords, been gun fears, suicidal boyfriends. It just goes on and on. I got a court order that our daughters be returned to my home. My oldest daughter, Danny, was so upset, she actually told the police that she'd rather go to a foster home and that she won't stay with her mom and that she will run away. The girls weren't even home for 24 hours. My ex-husband, Daniel, kidnapped my daughters in the middle of the night. I did not kidnap my daughters. My girls were forced to go back to their moms, and 11 hours later, they ran away. Daniel faced with my daughter, Danny, and told her to run away. Once the police removed the kids, I realized quickly that the children were going to run away. I was concerned for their safety. They're going to run away. They have to get to a phone and call me immediately or call the police. It was 2 in the morning. I get a phone call. It was my daughter telling me they're somewhere near their mom's house. I haven't seen either of my daughters in over a month. My fear is that Daniel has kidnapped my daughters and I will never see them again. Despite the court order, and if it is breaking the law, my kid's safety is more important to me. A mother's worst nightmare has come true, and I just don't know what to do. My daughters mean everything to me. That's all that I wanted was my kid. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to do that, okay? Okay, Robin, you want these children back. Yes, I want my children back. And you currently have physical custody. Yes, I have full physical custody and legal custody. Okay, so you are what's known as the residential yes. parent here. So yes, they I are am. to reside with you. Yes. So you guys have gone through the courts, gotten a divorce, the court has issued a ruling that says the children are to reside with you and have visitation from their father. Yes. Okay, so why are they not with you then? Because he kidnapped him last March, and then he kidnapped, the, he wouldn't give him back, and I went into, I had to go get another, cops wouldn't help me, even though my court order says mandatory enforcement, forcibly remove the kids. I had to go back to court, the judge ordered them to be forcibly removed and returned to me again, okay, which so they did. What happened? 
he got on Facebook and talked Danny into running away and told him, her not to forget Zoe. They waited till I was asleep. And when I got up, they were gone. Okay, so here's an excerpt from Daniel and Danny's Facebook messages. Is this what you're talking about here? Danny, Robin came and got the cops again. This is why I wish I could drive. I could, like, become a runaway. Daniel responds, this is nothing, honey. I spent hours with the attorney, and this was a one-time order to pick you up. You can walk out with Zoe anytime and tell me what corner you're on, and I'll come pick you up. Example, I'm on the corner of Street and Street. Then I know exactly where you are, and I will be there in 25 minutes. Don't forget Zoe. Yes, that's exactly what I'm talking about. That's yes. an actual street. That wasn't like a hypothetical. No, <laughs> he knew exactly where he was sending him. Okay, that was uh, that was an actual street. Okay. Yeah. So, have you talked to him about this? No. We do not have contact. Why not? Because he's extremely, extremely abusive, and you can't have, you cannot have a conversation with this man if you're like. Hey, Dan, why are you doing this? All of a sudden, I just get to hear I'm crazy, I deserve this, you did this, and you did this, and you did this, and I did none of this stuff. It's, he makes it all up, and he tells <clears throat> my kids this, and he's brainwashing them to hate me. Ever since I left him, he's brain. 13 years ago, he's been telling them what a horrible mother I am. Everything I do is wrong. The fact that I like to wash their laundry and make sure they have clean clothes for school. That's bad because I'm materialistic. The fact that I like to have them a nice house to live in, I'm just a materialistic, horrible, horrible mother. The fact that I keep my refrigerator stocked up with food, all I care about is money. I don't care anything about them. Well, all my money is going on them. That's what you do as a parent. These aren't bad things. These are what parents do. You say that he tells the girls that your family are all alcoholics. Yes. Is that true? No, there are, there are members of my family that are alcoholics, but uh -huh. I don't hang around those ones. Um, and you're concerned about what's happening with the girls when they're with him? Yes, I'm scared for their safety. I know exactly why he sold them at this particular age in their life. What do you mean? He was severely molested at this age in his life, and now is the perfect time to get me out of the out of their life so he can have as much fun. If he could break down their boundaries and they have nobody to run to, he can do whatever he wants. This is the, my daughters are beautiful. That's what he thinks women look like. And he has always said that's the perfect body. No, that's a little kid's body. That's not a body that you should be looking at in a sexual way. It's sick. So you're afraid that he may have inappropriate designs on the children? Yes, and the more I think about it, he might have already done something. I just... You don't know that. I don't know. I just know that... That's a very serious allegation. Yes, you're not making the allegation. No. You're saying that's a concern you that have. That is a concern. Um, you say that you believe that he has showed them inappropriate videos. Yes, horrific pornographic videos. And how do you know this? Because my daughter came home on Christmas crying. She told me what the video was. She called 911 to have a safety check on her sister because she was so concerned. What was on this video? It was pornographic, something horrible, horrible, and he was trying to convince them it was me. So he was trying to convince them that in this video that he was showing them... Was me. ...that this was you in the video yeah. doing these pornographic acts. Yes. And she was saying, that's not my mother. That's not my mom. I know what my mom looks like. But in order for her to make that judgment, she had to be looking at this right. tape. Correct. And this tape was very out there. The worst thing I've even heard of. I mean, we're talking bestiality yes, here. This that's was exactly what we're talking yeah. of. Okay. Um, how long were you married to this man? Two weeks. I had to come home right away and divorce him because he beat me up on my honeymoon. He beat you up on your honeymoon. So, okay. Now, you were married to him for two weeks, but yet you have two children. Yeah, I'm not very smart. What happened is uh, <sighs> I went home and I divorced him. Everything went through. And Did then you I have, do you have a child when you got married? No. Were you pregnant when you got married? Well, apparently I got pregnant on the honeymoon because when I came back and got divorced, I found out I was pregnant. Okay, so that's when you had your first child. Yes. Okay, so... I get that. 
surprise, surprise. Yeah. Um, but you then got pregnant with a man that you say beat you up on your honeymoon. Yes. Uh, you're going to have to tell me how that logic you. went I'm gonna, down. It is. So I find out I'm pregnant, and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm pregnant. Now I have to make it work with their father because they need a father, right? And, of course... There's not they. There's just one now. Well, at this point, yes. And, um, you know, I didn't have a father growing up, so they're very important to me, and he always tells me why he beats me. So I thought if I acted better, he would quit beating me, and I could make this stop. But you can't make it stop because I wasn't doing anything wrong. So your thought was, I'll behave better, yes. and he'll quit beating me. And, and then we could raise our child. And somewhere along in there, you decided to have another one. No, that was an accident, too. It was an accident. Yeah, I wasn't planning on it. Okay. I didn't even know I was pregnant till the day I left him. I just decided that's the last beat I've ever taken, and I walked out of there, and... Uh, I went to Women's Crisis and they said, are you pregnant? And I said, well, probably, because that would just make things so much worse. So, of course, I was. What do you mean it's an accident? You know how this works, right? Yes, I do. I, I, <laughs> maybe not. I've been pregnant 11 times. So I'm not good at birth control. But I was trying birth control. This is my first experience with birth control. And I was switching from the shot to a different kind because it wasn't working. And voila, baby. Okay. Uh, the last time Robin saw her ex-husband, she says, was in March of this year. Yes. They will come face to face when Daniel joins next. We'll be right back. Oh. I firmly believe Dan has brainwashed our daughters into hating me. Robin has always bashed me behind my back. He tells the girls that I'm a crazy psychopath all the time. She is nuts. The girls need to know the truth, that I'm the same one. And their father, Daniel, is the crazy one. And later... That's my oldest daughter That's flipping her mom off. You seem to take great pride in that. For them to stand up to this beast you see in front of you, yeah, I'm very, very proud of them. Wednesday on an all-new Dr. Phil. We're identical twins. We're both anorexic and bulimic. Two beautiful sisters. He's called them a vagabone skeleton. I didn't realize that you ate that much and threw it up. Because they're not a part of my life. A family in crisis. We want money for all of this. That's what you said to my staff? You need to become part of the solution or we're done. That's Wednesday. Daniel is completely reckless with our children. They're in constant danger that he would like that our daughters to experiment with drugs in a safe manner at the house with him because children are going to do it anyway, and he felt that was the safest way. Robin is such an unfit parent that her own children have filed police reports against her. When they're their moms, I've had safety concerns, cuts on their legs from swords, there have been gun fears, suicidal boyfriends. It just goes on and on. Bottom line is he's a bad, evil person. Robin may think that I'm a bad, evil guy, but I don't think about her at all. I, I've given up on her. Daniel says he has been battling with his ex-wife Robin in courts for years to get custody of their two daughters. Now, Daniel claims Robin's home is unsafe because she has a problem with alcohol and constantly dates abusive men. So what did Daniel do? Well, Robin claims he convinced their daughters to leave their home and meet him on the corner with nothing but the clothes on their back. Robin considers that he is brainwashing these, these children and, in fact, has kidnapped them. Take a look. Robin's been saying that I brainwashed my daughters. I firmly believe Dan has brainwashed our daughters and they hated me. He has made me out to be some sort of monster and turned the girls against me. I love my daughters and that is not brainwashing. Loving your children is not brainwashing. Robin has always bashed me behind my back. Daniel has my girls convinced that they have suffered horrendous beatings and abuse from my ex-husband. It's not true. It's all complete lies. Daniel tries to paint me and my entire family like we're just crazy. He tells the girls that I'm a crazy psychopath all the time. 
she is nuts. Robin needs to just face the fact that all the wicked things she has done to try and hurt me and to separate me from the only thing in the world that I love has now backfired. And she's dealing with the consequences and she's going to have to deal with it for the rest of her life. The girls need to know the truth that I'm the sane one and their father Daniel is the crazy one. Okay, Daniel, you, you've been listening to the show so oh, far, yeah. right? Um, I, I've given her a chance to speak. I want to give you the chance to do the same thing. What do you say? Is there anything in particular that she said that you want to respond to? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, when it started about the, the worst custody battle you could ever imagine or in the history of, of, of modern society, that's all true. Everything else she said is a complete blatant lie. She's mentally disabled. She's on medication. Well, well, who are you? And well, well, she's who are you talking to? Everybody that Talk to heard me. that nonsense. Uh, <clears throat> it's all complete. That's a lie. Insanity. Daniel, I am not and on any medications. The, this this well, type. Wait, wait a minute. Now, uh, you let okay. uh, I, I let you speak. Now let let him speak. Go ahead. The fantasies that you just heard come from somebody that's mentally unstable and has been doing the things that she describes are what's been happening to her with the recent boyfriends she's had from prior, you know, prior marriage. She had three kids when I met her already. How many boyfriends? How many boyfriends have I had, Dan? She, Name them. In 13 we have, years, we have I've our kids here. five people. I actually five. brought reports of uh, and uh, police reports. If domestic and, violence, Daniel, why did you beat me up on my honeymoon? This? Why did you beat me when I was pregnant? Okay, hold on. We'll get to that. Okay. okay? Go ahead. So just for, for the audience's sake, for people that want to judge me by what she says, I have never laid a harmful hand on a woman in my life. I am a black belt many, in the martial how arts many in, in several hold, forms. Hold, hold on. I'll let you respond okay. in a minute. Okay. And if half of what she said is true, I would be in prison for life. If, if half of it. Just, I mean... That was insane. Now, I have battled allegations of, of me kicking her in the back, and there, where there's a little quarter-shaped bruise in her back. It was four days after I dropped the kids off, four days after this fresh quarter-sized bruise, exactly the size of the seesaw that she leaves in the backyard with no supervision, four-year-old girl and six-year-old girl, and somebody slammed her in the back, and guess what? I have to... To, to convince CPS that I wasn't nowhere found. And every single time she does this, it's always dropped. I'm always found innocent. But I lose 30 days. I lose two weeks they of visitation. Get, I had to do two weeks supervised visits. And every lie Never that she once. did, I have Never defeated once. for Never years. Once. I have defeated every single thing she has done. And you know what happened? The kids see what's going on. They've been watching her for 14 years. Everything she said to you, these kids have lived with it, and then they only have me on the weekends, and then one week, alternating weeks during the summertime, and she wants to tell you that I'm the one that has shaped them, and that I am the one who has somehow brainwashed them, when she has had them exclusively up until the age of about 10. It's only been the last four years when my children have, can talk to the police, can write police reports and orders, and then the truth starts to come out. And guess what? They started running away. And, they, and my oldest started running okay. away when she was 10 years old. She's not telling you that. And They've then lastly, away before, well, she be, hasn't right, seen these on, kids since on. May of 2015. That's not this okay. year. Hold, hold on, They've hold been on, living hold. with me exclusively since last year, Mother's Day. She kicked them out. Okay, she, hold and on, they're hold here on. to testify. Here, talk to me. Talk to me. Do you breathe through your ears? <laughs> you <laughs> you got to take a breath sometime here. She says that you have beaten her physically on a regular basis. I have so never you have the opportunity to respond to a woman in my life, including her, even though I don't quite consider her a woman anymore. And later, have you had...
restraining orders filed against you by other women? She's filed eight against me. Have you had restraining orders filed against you by other women? No, not that I know of, okay? Hey, Dr. Phil here. Did you know that more than 16 million kids in the U.S. are at risk of hunger each day? That's more than one in five children. Now, these are our neighbors, our kids that play in the neighborhood, co-workers, friends' children. The problem is closer than you would think, but so is the solution. Join me and visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger to find your local food bank to help. I'm Dr. Phil, and together, we are Feeding America. She says that you, across a, a period of time, have beaten her physically on a regular basis. I want to give you the opportunity to clear that up. Are you saying that is absolutely not completely true? Completely fictitious. Wouldn't you, I know they asked me, do we have any evidence? Do you have any evidence of something? Like I say, my daughter ran away when she was 10. I brought evidence of that. I bought a police report. Show us okay. one police report. If a man lays a hand on you and you have one bruise, show us the police report. Show well, us the I'm facts. asking you. I have so never you have the opportunity to respond on a woman to that. in my life. So ever. I'm not asking about any other women. I'm just asking about this one. You've not beaten in, your wife, including her. Even though I, I don't quite consider her a woman anymore, but but. Okay. All right. Now, so you're saying that that she is not telling the truth. That you have never hit her, beaten her, abused her physically in any way. In any way at all. Okay. Never. Ever. Now, ever. You you do admit that you emotionally and verbally abuse her. I do, I do. I, well, you've done it that? since you've been out here. Well, how do you how do you respond to what she just said? Well, I'm, you're, you're saying she's you're saying she's not even a woman. She you said she's crazy. Me. You're, I mean, she those are abusive things to I say to anyone. She actually molest my hmm. children. She, what do you call someone? No, actually, she didn't say that. Yes, she did. I no, was she didn't say that. I, I've, this is on tape, oh, okay. and I can play it back. In fact, I, on your behalf. I was very careful and clarified, are you accusing him of that or are you saying you are concerned that that could happen? I made clear that she was not making that accusation against you because I didn't want you to have to deal with that. Okay. So on your behalf, I clarified that for you. Well, then maybe I, I mistook it as, a, as like, you know, like, because I did have to fight CPS as soon as we got back. Guess who's at my house? Well, Child Protective Services. And they mentioned something about pornography. You know what I did? I threw my hands up. I said, you got to talk to the kids because I don't know anything that. about well, this. Well, Daniel, I'm, let me tell you something. <clears throat> let me tell you something. I'm, I'm trained as a forensic psychologist. I've worked as an officer of the court in custody proceedings. So I listen to what is said very carefully. I also hear what isn't said. I hear how things are said. And so I very carefully clarified, was she making an accusation or was she expressing a concern? She expressed a concern and did not make an allegation. So I want to be very clear about that. It is correct, right? That's correct. You're not accusing him no, of I'm molesting not. your children. No. You're saying that you have a concern. But that's a lie. I have a concern. I, she did make the allegation. I did have to deal with Child Protective Services. I never Ask have. my children. She didn't They're make the allegation right here now. to me. They're here to she tell you. She didn't make the allegation here to me. Okay, but I oh, did right. have to deal with Child Protective Services about okay, this You're this saying that you don't, that she's, she's shaping to. these children. You're not shaping these children. The, the, the prior years, before, until they developed a voice, until they could stand up to their mother, she tried to turn them against him. She moved 19 never... times. She tried to hide them from me. You are She's always been insanely jealous. Whenever I have the kids for a weekend, right. and I take them back, they cry. Well, they here's cry a comment. when they go to mom's. Here's so a comment that you I'm made on. I'm here's a comment them. that you made on Robin's Facebook page, Daniel. Oh my God, what is that hideous beast between my two beautiful girls? Yes. That was the night. I that never she... knew a mother could be so heartless and cold to their own children. Take a clue, Robin. They don't want to live with you because you're a terrible mother. You notice the finger dubbed out there on that screen? That's that's my oldest daughter that's flipping her mom girl. off. Hey, do me a favor. Talk to me. This is not an election and they oh. don't vote. I've done a lot of <laughs> I've done okay. a lot of court. So, okay. so 
So you see the middle me. finger there has been dubbed out. My, yeah. my daughter's flipping. She pulled that down as soon as she realized the family photo. Zoe knew she was flipping her up. That. My youngest knew she was looking at the phone. I she knew too. Danny was flipping I her mom off, and she took the picture anyway. I did. That's okay. what you're really seeing. There. Okay, you seem to take great pride in that. No, you know what I'm proud of? I'm proud that my kids have finally stood up against these, all these lies, this wickedness. But you she seem to take great to pride in that your daughter you is really flipping off their mother. Uh, for them to stand up to this beast you see in front of you, yeah, I'm very, very proud of them. I'm very, very proud of them. Wow. Yeah. So you think that's appropriate behavior for a 14-year-old with her mother? She sits in her house drunk every day. That's what she does. That's her life. She How collects do you know what welfare, I do in my house? and and she, if she does get a boyfriend that has a job, it's a 12-pack each. Every day. Kids, How do you know the, what I do kid, in my house? You don't go in my kid. house. You know what? You don't allow the Six years on the reservation. You know how many cans are just stacked out? They're, they're, None. My house is always clean. Every day, it's a whole 50-gallon barrel you have full, a of, full of cans. They have don't you, recycle like do they do in Oregon. There, they just picture? pile up. And so, <laughs> touching evidence didn't take a I, picture. See, the beauty is the kids are here to tell the truth, to tell and them that's what, what she doesn't say. understand. She I doesn't do understand, understand that now they, I'm not alone anymore. She can't just make up stories, and because you can now ask the ones that lived with her for 14 years. Oh, I'm stacking up a lot of evidence from both of you every time you open your mouths. There, there's lots of. Um, we're going to take a break, and um, I am going to speak with uh, Daniel and Robin's daughters a little bit later. But first, when we come back, we're going to find out why Daniel claims Robin is so dangerous that he had to take their children to the police station so they can report their own mother's bad behavior. We'll be right back. Danny leaps out of the car, runs into the police station, screaming, my mom's trying to take us, it's my you dad's time. You are such time. a liar, this never happened. My daughter was 10 years old when she started running away from her mom. Some of the things that Daniel has done to make my girls think I'm a horrible person are completely unthinkable. Daniel has shown the girls incredibly horrific, graphic, pornographic videos. To make matters even worse, he tried to convince the girls that the video was of me. The girls didn't buy it. It just demonstrates that the girl's father is sick and dangerous. In my mind, what Daniel is doing is beyond abuse. My fear is Daniel is baiting our daughters, and his real intention is to sexually abuse them. Child Protective Services shows up and takes my kids in a back room and inquires, and the case is immediately closed, found completely fraudulent. Robin has even accused some of my family members of inappropriate activity. I hear crazy stuff. Robin says I'm a bad parent. You have to consider the source. Everything she says is a lie. Well, Robin is convinced that her ex, Daniel, has kidnapped her children because he's now sexually interested in them. I asked her if she thought that he had molested them. She said no. She's just concerned about it. Robin says she believes it's no coincidence that Daniel has encouraged her 12 and 14 year old daughters to run away now that they have hit puberty. Um, I, you know, that's that's a very difficult thing for you to respond to because no, how not. do you I how do you proof. how do you prove something in the negative? Okay, first of all, back in 2012, uh, my oldest was was 10 years old, and she took the kids to hide them from me. But I found them. I went there I and I made myself an available I parent. I can't hide them. Can I finish? Maybe. Anyway, she was not letting me have visitations. Never and, once. And if it I, never happened once. If I, if I, we, I brought the police report. The only people. She was trying to hide them from me. Danny leaps out of the car when Robin's trying to drive away. She, my oldest, jumps out of the car, runs into the police station, screaming, "My mom's trying to take us! It's my you dad's time!" You are such a liar. This never happened. My daughter writes a police report. This, this actually, I brought several police reports. But she was 10 years old when she started running away from her mom. She's this never is not ran away before. New. That's a lie. The, the, and, and never. She, 
and they and they tell her she's a drunk, and they tell her that they're tired of seeing, that they're embarrassed of her, that they're, they that they want to go to school happened. programs, but she's too drunk to drive them. They can't do any school activities. She they can't do you know uh, honor roll stuff. They can't do sports. They can't do anything because she's drunk all the time, and that's why they come to me. So I start <clears> driving them. They when they get off the bus, they come to my house after school, and I drive them where they're going. And that's when she starts getting crazy. She gets insanely jealous. But I brought a police report when my daughter was 10 years old and jumped out of a moving car never to happened. get away from her well, mom. Well, here's the police report that you're referring to. At approximately 8.07 p.m., I, I'm taking the patrolman's name out, for blank police department, was dispatched to speak with Daniel regarding a child custody issue involving his two daughters. He advised it was his weekend to have the daughters, and when he attempted to drop off the two girls at their mother's residence, where there was no answer at the door, Daniel advised Robin called him about the whereabouts of the two girls. Daniel said he could tell Robin had been drinking based on how she had been talking. Daniel informed me he understood the court-ordered paperwork states Robin is supposed to have the kids, but he didn't feel right making them go over to the residence where they were scared of the violence. Now this is referring to yeah. you're not wanting them to be around this drinking you're talking about all the time. Yeah, this is not the one. No, I'm I understand. Talking. I'm talking about the drinking. Okay. This is you're saying you don't want them to be around the drinking. Yeah, the police refuse to take them to her. They won't help her anymore. She's a drunk. Yeah. Nobody will help her. The judge won't help her. The police won't help her. I she, won every court. They case. won't even give Everyone. her restraining order. She tries to fi fill I've out these allegations. They order. decline them again and again. They I bought all those too. I've got 13 restraining orders. I submitted On that they're not going to present because nobody believes her anymore. Really? Nobody. Okay. Um, but that was How not the How many other women have to have restraining orders on you, Dan? How many other? I know of three right now. Women. All women. members of your family. Not none of my family. Yeah. If it and was, she, if it was such a chaotic situation, why'd you marry her? I'm the. Oh God. <laughs> Be really frank. I mean, a, a PG Frank. I don't know. I had a chance to be a hero, man. Wednesday on an all-new Dr. Phil. We're identical twins. We're both anorexic and bulimic. Two beautiful sisters. He's called them vagabond skeleton. I didn't realize that you ate that much and threw it up. Because they're not a part of my life. A family in crisis. We want money for all of this. That's what you said to my staff? You need to become part of the solution or we're done. That's Wednesday. He was in this horrific situation, it, so why did you marry him? I, I heard her struggling. You did the same thing to her about, about the childbirth. I have never had, can I be really frank? I mean, a, a PG frank? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> at this time, I was such a hero. I was doing a demonstration in, in judo, and the, and the next thing I knew, the class doubled in size. It was her and her sister, and each of them had a whole litter. I mean, a litter of puppies, you know. The class doubled in size, and they're both competing for my affections. This went on for like really? six months. Because we and don't even Before like I even realized what was going on, and, and anyway, she needed a place to stay. She had been drug out by her hair. Her car tire was shot out. Her mom had put a gun to her head. Her kids were stolen. We've been over all that. I'm just asking She's a why cute you married woman her. in distress, and I had a chance to be a hero, man. That's what it was about. I was the, I thought I was the, the white, the knight exactly. in shining armor, man. What is and, it? It and, and, then, and then there was a whole bunch of, you know, she was a good-looking young lady who needed help. Have you had? Um... Have you had restraining orders filed against you by other women? She's filed eight against me. Have you had restraining orders not, not filed against you no. by You're other women? You're a liar. Oh, I, what, you, are you talking about, oh, I can't say names. You All the people in your house, Nobody well, they're, not to my, they're not my people. No, no. These, they're Nobody people I don't even know. To. My but, family has never got a restraining she, order. They're not afraid of you. Excuse me. Have you had restraining orders filed against you by other women? No. No. <laughs> Not that I know of, okay? I mean, they serve if, you, if, you know. <laughs> holy, I mean, does it mean if they file something, it gets rejected because I haven't been served, okay? I haven't been. The you only one is, is Robin, right Robin, 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 Robin. Nope. Eight. I lost count at eight. But beating me up. How many and, times did I have to now, make you stop? And I'm not, not a single one was there ever police contact? Was there ever any evidence? And they were all dropped. Every single one. So there have been. Uh, 
Restraining orders found against you. No, they haven't been dropped. No. All her. Eight restraining no. orders from her. No. From this woman <laughs> sitting right here. You, you, no, I have no recollection. I have no idea what you're talking when about. When we, okay. we were, did the pre-interview with you, you said that you wished she would be dead. No, that's not what I said. They tried to get me to say that. Was that you? Because that infuriated me. Here's what I said. My, my daughter now, and wait, wait till you meet her and you, and you talk to her, uh, the rage and, and the anger that she has fostered by, by trying to, to convince them how rotten I am. When they have me every weekend, they know how loving I am. So what did now you say? Now has, has spawned this really angry 14-year-old that makes that comment. And maybe somebody got their wires crossed. And let me tell you something. No parent who loves their child would want their child to, to have a parent die. My 12-year-old would be devastated. So that's the stupidest thing in the world. What I will say and what I have said and what I do believe that if something horrible was to happen to her, because it was asked of me, if something happened to Robin, our lives would certainly get much easier. My whole family, my, of course you'd have my children, my would, would, the only thing is Zoe would still be sad. Danny would be sadder than she thinks, but she doesn't know it. She says, really? She I said, I remember I love you on the few hours I had her home. She said, we'll see, we'll see what she said. said well, it'll all be here. She, we'll see what she said. So, so you didn't take her word for it, then you're just being deceived. You're just so hearing. you didn't say that. I said the way I said it. Here, what, what I said, when they asked me, you know, well, how would you feel if Robin was, wasn't out of the picture anymore? Oh, God, what a relief that would be. You know, because how do you defend something that never occurred? When they come off and say, you know, he went to Mars and pulled his pants off and, and raped an alien, you know, what am I supposed to say? I did not. You know, I, how can you prove something that doesn't even exist? How, how can you defend against something that is just a dream? I'm you just know? trying to figure out so whether you did or didn't say <laughs> whether you did or I'm just trying to figure out whether you did or didn't say that things would be better if she was dead. Be exact again, be precise. We record our pre-interviews. Here's what you said. Hey, Dr. Phil here. We're ready to start the show, but we're waiting on you. If you're going to be in the Los Angeles area and want to watch a live taping of the Dr. Phil Show, call 323-461-PHIL. That's 323-461-7445 or visit drphil.com. Tickets are free and I hope to see you soon. I'm just trying to figure out whether you did or didn't say that things would be better if she was dead. I, uh... My daughter has been, I've been having to defend That's not Robin. an essay question. No. What I would say is, if something happened, and I remember I talked with, with one of your people. <laughs> if something happened to her and we never saw her again, our lives would be a lot better. And that includes the girls, okay? They don't have to deal with cops waking them up in the middle of the night, dragging them out of the house. That and then, never and, and happened. It, it, it's it's been happening for 14 years. It's been I'm happening. just trying to get an answer wrong. to a simple question. is whether or not you said if your children's mother passed away, things would be better. Because that, to me, is significant. If you, it would absolutely, would, would, we would immediately did you all uh, be the huge sigh of relief if, as far as the older people. Zoe would be devastated. She would be devastated because she still thinks mom can be saved. She still thinks So you did that, say that. that. I didn't say what I didn't say when she was dead. No. No, I did not say that. Not what, what be exact again, be precise. Cuz I didn't say I wish she was dead. That's my daughter. Well, you said your life would be better if she was dead. If she was gone forever, yeah. I, I, yeah, definitely. <laughs> when you suffer as much as I've had, I've spent six months on the ground in the fetal position. In the fetal position, crying, okay, because really? she well, yanked the children from me. And, and I fought I tooth and nail. I, I spent over $50,000 well, okay. in the battle. Right, actually, and you don't miss people that put you through that. You just, you don't miss them, man. I gave you actually, here, we, we record our pre-interviews. Here's what you said. Between you and me, if you 
like passed away, my life would be better. You know what I mean? Uh, no, no tears here. Yep. <laughs> that doesn't mean I wish you your children's mother. <laughs> your children's mother. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I have to hold to that. I'm, I, you guys, you don't know. You don't know what it feels like when, when your children are taken from you at three months old. The only reason I have my kids is because I got paperwork filed. I am the petitioner for custody at three months old with my firstborn mm -hmm. child. I didn't see my baby for six months until the I court her made her come back. To, they to, not I have a picture of a, of a two-day visit in six months where my baby was taken by months, this and I brought demon twice. right here sitting in two front of you. Okay, and, and you know what? I thought you and I am still lost. standing. I I'm still here. And, and you these fought, kids, no, you they lost. love me. I and they will always love me. So is there any basis to Daniel's concerns here? Is there any basis to Daniel's concerns here? We'll talk about that when we come back. Do you have a drinking problem? I went to treatment and he harassed me on a daily basis. I wish you never got out. Stay on an all-new Dr. Phil. We're identical twins. We're both anoxic and bulimic. Two beautiful sisters. He's called them the vagabone skeleton. I didn't realize that you ate that much and threw it up. Because they're not a part of my life. A family in crisis. We want money for all of this. That's what you said to my staff? You need to become part of the solution or we're done. That's Wednesday. Ready to get real? Go to DrPhil.com for advice on relationships, parenting, finances, and more. Plus, weigh in on your favorite episodes, share your stories, and find support in the Dr. Phil community. When you sign up for the community, you will automatically be subscribed to the Dr. Phil Show newsletter. Log on to DrPhil.com today. Well, we're out of time today. We've heard a lot of serious allegations and name-calling, especially from Robin, who claims Daniel brainwashed their daughters. So what's really going on here? Well, we're going to get to the bottom of it all during tomorrow's shocking conclusion, where we hear new explosive accusations from Daniel about Robin and the man he claims she allowed within inches of her daughters. Also, we'll hear from their daughters, Danny and Zoe. Their father told us how he claims they feel but what do they really say? Did they run away? Or were they really kidnapped by Daniel? Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. Daniel's facing contempt charges for kidnapping our daughters. They ran away. How in the world is that kidnapping? You're encouraging your kids to run away. No, no, you guys didn't play the evidence. That's bull. Put the damn thing up. I'm calling bull on your bull. The one day you had them, you were drunk. You are a liar. The best gift you can give your daughters is get them the hell out of her house. You need to stop being a know-it-all. That's tomorrow. Stay tuned. Believe me, you will not want to miss this. Log on to DrPhil.com and share your thoughts on our message boards. You can also find me on Facebook and Twitter. We'll see you tomorrow.